located at 15901 Dr. Martin Luther King and Home Avenue, three blocks north of Pearson Road, where you are always welcome. We're teaching tonight on the blood covenant. That's one of our major subjects. The other subject is spiritual warfare, and the other subject is deliverance. So the blood covenant, deliverance, spiritual warfare, that's what we've been teaching for more than five years. we got textbooks on it. We're going to pray so that God will hear us when we preach. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for loving, kind, and tender mercy. You're God all by yourself. All the snow belong to you. The sun belong to you. We belong to you. <clears throat> the weather is controlled by you. You are the weather man. And we thank you for it. Whatever you send, we'll love you for it. And we'll continue to be faithful in the things of God. We're going to teach your word, but we need your help. We're going to lead your people. Let me follow you. They follow us. Teach your word tonight in simplicity. Do it for your glory. We'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I have a word for you that I just received from God. Write it down if you would, please. You will not remember it. 128 <clears throat> 2014 <clears throat> God spoke this woke me up reading God's word reading God's word is an open door into the room of prophecy. <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> God gave me this today, 128 or 29, 2014. Reading God's word is an open door <clears throat> into the room of prophecy. Somebody read that back to me. I want to make sure you get it. You missed a word. Reading God's word is, a, is an open door. Reading God's word is an open door into the room of prophecy. Reading God's word is an open door <clears throat> to the room of prophecy. <clears throat> and the more you read, you can't get prophecy without the word. Are you listening to me? So don't let just anybody come and tell you, I think the Lord is saying, you don't have to think about the Lord is saying something. Amen. But to tell somebody what God said, it is called preaching. That's what preaching is. You can't preach a message if you don't hear it from God. That's right. Amen. A message means it didn't come from you. It came to you from somebody to somebody. That's right. Amen. So when you speak out of the book, you're lying. Say amen, somebody, before I call you one. When you speak out of sight God's word, you are a demon. Because the devil is a liar and the father of it. So this Bible call is specialized in nothing but what? The word. Nothing but the word. 2 Corinthians 3 is what we're going to begin. In your, on the board there, this subject, Blood Covenant, I looked on page 14, there's a whole lot of scriptures there, and I just picked out 2 Corinthians 3. <clears throat> I 
2 Corinthians 3, 1 through 17. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some others epistles commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts known and read of all men. When you teach people God's word when they are God's people if you give them God's word because they're God's people, they will repeat it to somebody. It's called preaching. I said, preaching God's word is called preaching. Amen. You can't preach what you don't read. Amen. Amen. Nobody can do that. Because what you read is the word of God. God spoke it. You read it. You're preaching. I didn't say you was a preacher. I say you preach when you read the word. Because in the beginning it was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. When you read something to somebody concerning God, you are a preacher. Amen. Male or female. Amen. 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 Paul is saying, you are our epistle, you are our letter, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. That is, everywhere we go, we tell you, Tell the people, you know those people in Corinthian, they are beautiful. That was the worst church ever, the Corinthian church. But Paul is telling these people, I make people know that you know God. Third verse in 2 Corinthians 3. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle the letter of Christ ministered by us. This, this is the letter of Christ here. It's written by Christ about Christ using the hand of people that love Christ. 2 Corinthians 3, 2 Written not with ink but with the spirit of the living God. Not in tables of stone but and flesh the tables of the heart. God wants his word to be in our hearts. Our heart is our spirit. God is a spirit. His word is spirit. So you can't put no intellectual knowledge with God's word. The number of the congregation will grow large when you leave God out. Amen. When you teach foolishness, the world love foolishness. But we had a pastor, his wife and two daughters came all the way from Bay City Sunday night. It was bad Sunday night. His wife said, I'd like to come here every Sunday night. They're pastors, PhDs. I gave him a PhD. He earned it. Got a seven degree black belt, brother. Don't bother that man. <laughs> He'll put you in flight just as humble as a baby. You wouldn't know he had nothing. He's going for his eight degree black belt. The highest they will give you is nine. You see how the martial arts reward their students for consistency in the skill. We're skillful. Amen. Well, I am. Amen. I know that hell is down. Hey, they want to take you down there too. And I know that heaven is up. Now that makes me smart. And I know the difference between heaven and hell. That's some good knowledge there. Jesus said, if, 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 if this be good, go, go and worship Belial. And if God be God, worship him. He said, but that's for me in my house. Working in the shop as an electrician, read my Bible every day. The foreman came and told me, Wheeler, you, 
You've been reading that book for years. You ain't through yet. He thought this was a novel. I didn't try to teach him. I said, no, sir. And you Listen, man. You can't lead a person where he doesn't want to go. And you can't teach a person when he doesn't want to what? No. no. He didn't do it. I, you were like that, me too. But one day though, the devil grabbed me up and slammed me against the ground. And boom, and when I come up, Jesus. <laughs> huh? The Lord's got a skill. He'll back off and let the devil have a shot at you. Sure will. Amen. And told him by Job, don't you touch your soul. Do what you want, but that soul belongs to me. Amen. Amen. God ain't chained to him, man. He ain't chained to him, man. I'm in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3. The third verse says, For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the, uh, the letter of Christ, the written word of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Do you see what the Holy Ghost is doing? He's writing this, this word in your heart. That's, that's I got my finger on it. Second Corinthians 3.3 3. Not in tables of stone That is But in fleshly tables Of the heart The Holy Spirit job is to put The word of Christ in your spirit Amen. Amen. You ain't got to stay up all night You can if you want to and enjoy it. But if you love Jesus hey, uh -huh. hey, uh -huh. The Holy Spirit job is to give you as much Jesus as you can contain. And a shout is an overflow of Jesus. You just can't stand no more goodness. Our subject is spiritual liberty, salvation. And you'll be seeing salvation as we read. 2 Corinthians 3, 4. And such trust have we through Christ to God word that God might continue to enlarge himself in you. Second Corinthians three five. Not that we're sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. I don't read this good. I've been here before. Amen. Yeah, I've been here before. So I'm semi reading and semi remembering. Because God don't have no smart folks. And he said the word of God is so plain even a fool need not error. <clears throat> but when I read all of this 2 Corinthians 3, 1 through 4, when I read the 5th verse, that reach out and get me. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. But our sufficiency. Hey, what? Is of God. God is my helper. Yes. He's my fixer. He's my doctor. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my leader. Not that we. Paul is right. And he involved himself along with the people. <clears throat> Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. This Bible didn't come from no self. It came from the Savior to save the self. But our sufficiency, good God Almighty, is of God. Now, sufficiently means completely. 
that word sufficient implies I can do all things through Christ that what? Strengthen me. He's your strength. He's your educator. He's your helper. He's your savior. He's your deliverer. He's everything. So Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3, 5, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. But our sufficiency, we need to get that, boy. We need to get that. Paul didn't say my sufficiency, y'all sufficiency. 2 Corinthians 3, 5, but our sufficiency is of God who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kill it, but the Spirit give it life. If you ever want to get into an argument, you know you're talking about the letter. There is no debate in God's family. If the pastor takes you where you haven't been, just hold on. He's supposed to be ahead of you. Amen. Amen. Six verse in Second Corinthians three, our subject is spiritual liberty, salvation. Who also had made us able what? Ministers of what? The New Testament. There are no able ministers of the Old Testament because the Old Testament is not complete. It's like a finger pointing to what? The New Testament. Amen. If the Old Testament was sufficient, there would be no need for the birth of Christ. So the Old Testament tell us Jesus is coming. Son of that Matthew. Matthew said, he's here. Amen. Who? The one that the prophet said from Genesis to the backside of Matthew. But you see Jesus sprinkling types from Genesis to Matthew. Amen. Amen. How come they had gone so far? They didn't know, they didn't know right from wrong. They didn't care. Amen. But God did. Didn't know right from wrong, but St. John 3.16 is still there. God so loved the world. It is in the book. I say it is in the book. Now, we, we, here we are. Here, here's, here, here's the church. And here's the world. Filthy. Curse the name of God. Fighting like Demons. And God said, I love them so much. Just like they are. Too much to leave them that way. Jesus looked to him, said, you're going to send me. He said, yeah. Go down. <laughs> Die. That through your death, they might receive life. Preachers, Sin ain't no joke. I said, sin ain't no joke, brother. Sin is designed to destroy God's masterpiece. Man. Now, Satan <coughs> don't control sin. He use it. He introduce it to you. All you got to do is say, no, sir. Amen. That's some of that. <clears throat> look, look, at how, look how much power your choice, your will of choice is. Yes. Amen. You can tell the devil, no. Amen. 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 You can tell Jesus the same thing. No. Yes. It's a choice. Tell Satan no, you got life. Hey, Mahaya said to her, Tell Jesus no, you got death. (coughs) 
Both of those choices, <clears throat> both of those statements got a choice. Choose you this day, whom you will serve. If Belial be God, then serve him. If Jehovah be God, serve him. I set before you life, what? And death, you choose. He ain't going to choose for you. He'll die for you, give you wisdom to choose, but you're a free moral agent. And you can use that freedom to curse God, to curse his son Jesus. God the Father and God the Son will forgive you. But if you lose that liberty, if you use that liberty, to blaspheme, my Bible says you will not be forgiven in this world or the world to come. And blaspheming is this, speaking a word against God. That's right. Mr. That's tight. He said you will not be forgiven in this world or the world to come. And he didn't say if you knew or if you didn't know. That ain't in there. Stop lying, preacher. See it like it is. Read it like it is. Leave it like it is. And you'll get where he is. Leave it alone. Don't add to it. Hey, my shataha. Don't take from it. God is God. And beside him, he said, I don't know no other God but me. Hey, mm, our subject is spiritual liberty. It's called salvation. You're going to be seeing it in this scripture here. We're in 2 Corinthians 3. I'm enjoying myself. The sixth verse in 2 Corinthians 3. God, who also had made us able. Is that in your Bible? Mm -hmm. Able what? Ministers of what? The New Testament from Matthew to what Revelation? Nobody is perfected from Genesis to Matthew. It is in process. So they forgot God in the Old Testament. And Matthew was one of the first books that God introduced to the world that they might see their self and their Savior. The law came by Moses. Can't get saved by the law. Don't do this and got to do this and wear long dresses and cut your eyelashes off. And no. But my Bible said grace and mercy came by Jesus Christ. And now let's don't underestimate this, man. Grace and mercy caused Jesus his life. He had to go to hell to buy grace and mercy. So when we, we need to get serious, boy. He paid a price. He did not owe. No, 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 no. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. We will always owe oh Jesus. Amen. And out of that debt should come, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your love and your Kind. You see, it was love that took him to the cross. Good God. It was love that broke the bundles. Hell had Jesus, brother, for three days. Our sin was wrapped around his neck. 
but in three days. Jesus talking about his body said, destroy this temple. He did say it. And he said, in three days, I will raise it up. He didn't say, my father, the Holy Ghost, I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> what should I say? Lord, spare me from this. He said, for this reason came I into the world, that through my death you might have life. <laughs> That's the kind of gospel we need to preach, preacher. Yeah. What Jesus did to save the sinner. What Jesus did to keep the saints. Period. There ain't nothing else. Oh, we have a choir. Some people have praise teams and strip dances. What do you call them, people? You can't get a group of, group of people to come to church on Wednesday to practice a holy dance. That is not possible. Amen. There are holy dances. But it just came up on them. <laughs> ah, ah. Glory to God. It's spontaneous. It's a hard thing, man. Right. It works out of the heart and the body just don't know what to do. So they just do something. Our subject is spiritual liberty, what is salvation. We are in 2 Corinthians 3. The sixth verse, I'm going back to the fifth verse in 2 Corinthians 3. I got a blessing out of 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything at. That, it's in the book, ain't it? We're not sufficient. If you ever think you're sufficient, catch you a plane like I did in South Africa. <laughs> Look at here, boy. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing under you but water, man. Well, I prayed too much when I got over there. I, I said, I kiss in the ground. When I, I said, Lord, I, that's why I got that prayer. I said, Lord, I sure thank you. Got off and couldn't hardly walk. You sit down for a whole day. And Pastor came and got me at the fabulous airport, you know what I mean? And I'm just looking, oh, I said, oh. Like, he's what you're looking at. Pastor, I said, the ground, man, the ground. <laughs> When I got over there, it was day, but I act like it was night. And my night act like I had to orientate myself. I crossed that line. You know, whatever you call that line. When I was going down south, they got a line called Mason-Dixie line or something. I forget what they call it. That means when you pass this line, you better act like you're black. <laughs> It is still there, preachers. Mason Dixie, that's what they call it, Mason Dixie. <clears throat> they got guys now born down there, white guys, come up here and try to apply that same spirit of prejudice. But they get grossly disappointed, brother. Huh? <clears throat> you need to know. <clears throat> The devil don't use colored white, black, yellow, green, and purple. He used the soul of a sinner. Now you tell me what color the soul is and I'll make it prejudice. The devil don't care who he use and God don't care who he say. Oh, we, we saw the risen soul. He's in the world today. He, he bent too. Now, it ain't just down south. Amen. My son is a policeman. He took his wife up north and was going to go into some of those smaller towns up there to get some gas. The guys came to the gas pump and said, you don't want to buy gas here. He said, okay, thank you, sir. The devil ain't just prejudiced down south. Where you get that crazy stuff from, man? The devil is a devil. He's a killer. And the guy was wearing those GI uniform thing and they didn't know he's talking to a 320 pound police. Didn't make them no difference. They are ready to kill. It's real, people. Amen, amen. 
But let me tell you something. It's like knocking Muhammad Ali down. You're in trouble now. You're going to need help when you get up. <laughs> ah! Here's what we need all over the country, not just America. Trust in the Lord. Yes, sir, I love that. With all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, yes, sir, he said it. Acknowledge God. <coughs> And he will direct your path. Now when that scripture get old to you, you need to get saved. You done back where it's led. When the word of God gets to be second nature, you're a sinner. How can you think we read, we, we've been reading Psalm 23 for years, man. And every time I read it, I say, Lord, I thank you. The word of God is God spoken. See it two ways. God spoke it. But it is God spoken. This is God. I got a handful of God here. Transfer it down in my heart now. Got a heart for you can pick up God with your hand, but you got to receive it with your heart, my heart, my heart, with your heart, with your heart. I'm teaching now, my I'm teaching now. Yeah, I'm teaching now. I'm teaching now. Second Corinthians 3 5. I always get hung up on good stuff. Not that we are sufficient. Now we need to get that. We are not sufficient. I had a mic. I paid good money for that mic. That thing started acting up. It's a thing. And somebody being that brother's helper gave me a better mic that ain't messed up. But if I keep on using it, it's a thing. Things, hey, go bad. Men go bad. It's called backsliding. Now we mess with that mic, try to put it over here, put it over here, wrap it around my neck, put it over here. It's a bad mic. A bad mic make bad sound. Now y'all ain't give it, y'all ain't give it, y'all ain't give it. It makes sound that you don't intend for the people to hear. <coughs> A bad life make bad sounds. <coughs> Any sinner will curse you flat foot out. There's an act saved just for a minute. <coughs> but when Satan press them, they'll press you. Satan have to give them a spirit of anger. And Satan's job is to feed that spirit of anger. He knows if I keep on feeding that displeasure, he's going to pop him in a minute. And I'm going to get pleasure. But let me tell you something. It ain't over yet. Because if they fight like cat and dog, they're the world. God so loved the world. Didn't, didn't he say it? He loved it. Let them fight. I'll come save both of them. God don't look at man action, accident, think yourself insufficient. The grace of God is sufficient, brother. It will stop the fight, save the soul, and drive the devil away. I'm a living witness. I had a temper like a buzz saw. You make me, you can weigh 700 pounds, I'm coming upside your head. I still got it. But Jesus got his foot on it. 
Now don't look at me like I'm a three-tailed duck. You ain't too cool neither. I can say, do it again, do it again. Try it again, stop it again. <laughs> you better give that to Jesus. <laughs> huh? The devil's job is to cause you to act like him. Jesus' job is to cause you to be like him. And when you are like him, you act like him. Go ahead. Drive the nails in my hand. Ain't no part on earth can hold me down. Go ahead. <sighs> Jesus said, for this cause, came I into the world that through my death he might have life. Through my suffering he might have healing. <laughs> through my rejection you might be accepted. He took everything that was bad, paid for it with his own blood. They had a time when they found out Jesus was dead. Three days though, he broke that party up. He came up bragging, I'm up. <laughs> ha, 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 up. <coughs> and look what he said. I know you heard it before, but you get it this time. All power. He started naming places. In heaven and in earth. Is in my hand. He didn't mention hell, did he? He took care of that while he died now. Took him three days. He took care of it. Our, our subject is spiritual liberty, salvation. We're in 2 Corinthians 3. We're hung up on some good stuff. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. This is good teaching here. Not that we are sufficient. I've actually heard pastors say, I don't allow my people to go so and so. I don't allow my people. Look at here. When did they get to be your people, preacher? I don't stay around that kind of teaching. I either cry or get disappointed and leave. My Bible tell me, come out. Come out from among us. Touch not that unclean thing, and then you might be my son and my daughter. He don't allow us to touch or be around unclean things. He didn't say unclean people. He said things. People ain't on things. That's what we have to read. It's slow and explain, man. There ain't no thing. You ain't no thing. No, no. See a woman with a tight dress on. Ooh, that's a fine thing. What? Things don't wear clothes. Well, you might say she didn't either, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't teach the word with the spirit of sadness. Amen. The spirit of joy is our strength. Yes, yes. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In spite of hell, you got to find a reason. Say, Lord, I th people ain't supposed to treat you like they're God. People hate you because you love God. It's normal. Amen. Amen. You seen that little small black bird and that great big old crow? Every time you see a crow, that little bird is picking on him. All he got to do is turn and just knock him out. They ain't never got along. Crow this big. Sparrow this big. It ain't the size that's both of them black. One just a little black and the other one a whole bunch of black. So color don't make unity. 
Salvation does. Amen. So marriage is a dip out of salvation because two are going to be called one. Now, what the hell? If you didn't dip it out of salvation, you ain't one. That's a lie. Whom God joined together, then you marry. But he said, now, if, if she be willing to live with you, don't divorce her. How do you know, old man or woman, you won't save your mate? But it's a heel of kind. I thought y'all let out church at 11.15. What you did come in here at 4 o'clock? <laughs> well, she asks you every Sunday morning, will you take me to church? So the job of the devil is to accuse the saints. But the law said, you know the devil is a liar. Now you can't be a liar if you're not a liar. The devil tells a lie to rob, to steal, and to kill. But Jesus said, I am come. See, everything the devil do is Jesus' job to do just the opposite so you can see the difference. And you have a choice. Yeah. The devil is the author of confusion. Amen. Jesus say, I came that you might have life and that you might have that life more abundantly. The devil is a killer. Jesus is a savior. You got to know the difference. Amen. And you got to know when these words come, what spirit drove those words out of that person's mouth. That spirit lives in that person's heart, dictates that lip. That's right. Don't get angry all out of shape. He's doing or she's doing according to their master. If Baal be God, serve him. Is Jehovah be God? Serve him. Choose. That's a choice. That's a whole bunch of snow out of there. You choose to come here to hear me tell you something you knew before you never know. But I always tell you the truth. And the Bible says you should know that truth. And that truth will make you free. Amen. Well, you might say I'm already free, yeah, but that's free onus. <laughs> that more saints. There is more. Yes. Amen. 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 I like to use natural stuff. You know. So I put on two t-shirts tonight, you know. I came inside the church. God said, pull on one of them shirts. So I went in my office and closed the door. Huh? Amen. Listen to me now. I had on too much. Y'all grown, ain't you? Amen. Too much. Make you hot. Amen. You ain't in the kindergarten. Amen. You're in college now. Amen. So you just tell that spirit back off of me. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for cooling me down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just had a vision that devil is fishing for your soul, honey. He wants you dead. And when you're one with Christ, when you're thinking about leaving, you just backslid. Because you can't think two and be one. Uh -huh. I said you can't think two and be one. No, you O Israel, that the Lord thy God is what? One God. 
Mahala. Um, I don't know, Kev, I get through it or not. My subject is spiritual liberty, which equals to salvation. And we're hung up gloriously on 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficient. Sufficient means able. Good enough to do without anybody else. So that word we implies a group of folk. Not that all of us are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. Now, pastors, the next time you get ready to have a business meeting, look at that. No group of people are sufficient, preacher. Amen. You got to be led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, the pastor's supposed to teach. He's supposed to handle the business. We ain't dead to meet now. I said to tell you, if you don't believe that's the devil, no, don't talk to him. <laughs> he, he'll call me a lie. Don't talk to him. <laughs> the fifth verse in 2 Corinthians 3. Not that we are sufficient. That's a sentence. Amen. I said, that's a sentence. You can put a prayer there. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves, look, to think anything as of ourselves. Well, I think we ought to have a gym for the young folk. Pat said, well, the guys be able to do. Well, let's have a Special meeting to raise some money for the gas bill. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. This gas bill here is pregnant with twins. <laughs> it is paid. Yes. Paid! <laughs> I believe this simple stuff, see. Put your trust in God. He will wake it out. <clears throat> I'm a living witness. God is my sufficiency. Amen. So I shall not want for nothing. Amen. <clears throat> Somebody say if I take the wings and go up in the air, you up there? Now, he said a bad thing. He said, if I make my bed in hell, what are you going to do that for? But in case I do, he's down now. Where can you go? To escape the mighty hand of God. Nowhere. There is no hiding place. He see you here. He saw you here. Writing on that vivid tablet you're writing on now. Before the world was. He's pretty smart too, you see. I said he's pretty smart too, you see. Well, if he's that smart, why are we staying up all night praying about a little problem? Somebody wrote a little song, turn it over to Jesus. He will what? He'll work it out. No, he's all of y'all staying up. God don't have to sleep. God said, tell them that that's a drawn out process. Young saints don't like to turn it over to Jesus. They figure, I've already turned myself over to Jesus, but what is self thinking about? The insufficiency of self. Well, in 2 Corinthians 3 5, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. God, who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament. So you read the New Testament like I'm doing and let the people know the author of the New Testament is your sufficiency. That's your job. 
not your seniority, not your wallet. I, I, I'd like to just tell you the truth, you know. You know all these people that call themselves a member here? We only got about three or four tithers. See the lights are on? Hear that heater fan blowing? Power for the mic to run? <clears throat> That's 2 Corinthians 3, <clears throat> 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. We are not sufficient. God has to help us pay these bills, people. Amen. And the pastor is not to criticize because you are not paying your tithe. That's between you and God. Amen. But I warn you, don't cost you. Not paying your tithes is called the work of iniquity. You are robbing God. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Them people from Bay City came down the last Sunday night and said, we're here because you tell it just like it is. He said, me and my wife and two daughters have been going all over the place. We come here, we know you're going to see us and say what you see. I said, amen, preacher. He said, we'll see you next Sunday night. They said it's up north, boy. There's a bunch of snow. There's no snow there in here. He got a karate school, seven degree black belt, 250 students. Drives a $75,000 cat limousine, Cadillac limousine. Just an ordinary man that trusts in God. He trusts in God so much. He's homeschooling his daughters. Amen. And they came in just hugging and kissing these black folk. I said, what? There's something different with these here people. They say, Amen. they say. So she confessed last Sunday night. Pastor, I told my husband to call you and ask you would you counsel us I said you did she said yeah he said she said I knew what was in his mind but you see two got to agree to become one on everything I said on everything if you don't like salt in the bread, stop putting salt in the bread. We look for the sky to break loose with wonders and British deals and mocking of thee. If he can't stand starch in his overalls, don't put so much in there. Little stuff like that can help you to get along. Amen. Amen. Our subject, spiritual liberty, salvation. We're in Second Corinthians three. We come on the fifth verse. <clears throat> Not that we, the church members, the saints of God, are sufficient of ourselves. Look now, to say anything as if it came from us. There's your business meeting. But. You need to get this simple gospel, man. But our sufficiency, not just the people, the pastor too. Our sufficiency is of God. God, who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament. Well, 2 Corinthians 3, 5 is New Testament. Who also, 6 verse, made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life when you have a business meeting. You are trusting the opinion of the people to lead the ministry. You are wrong. Amen. As ministers are led by what? The Spirit of God. You got to get that church in order. You don't vote as to whether God is right or not. Not in the holiness church. 
God said it, that settles it. Move on now. I want to read to you what God gave me again before I left the house. Reading God's word is an open door into the room of prophecy. You read God's word, he's going to talk to you. Amen. As a matter of fact, when you read God's word, he is talking to you. How do you answer back? Yea, Lord. That's all you got to say. Yea, Lord. Uh, God don't always tell us what pleases us, saints. <clears throat> to grow. We got to hear the word that would encourage us to move from point one to point two without intellectual understanding. Move by faith. Because the world said by faith we understand that the world was made by God. <laughs> well, if we can believe God made the whole world, ain't to my day. God spoke and there was a world. How are you going to measure that now? I'm going to read it again. Reading God's word is an open door into the room of prophecy. Because the word is a prophecy. You weren't that ahead, were you? Now you read it, ain't you? So the word is a prophecy. Our subject is from the book of the blood of the covenant. Our individual subject is spiritual liberty, which is salvation. Fifth verse, I don't care if I get away from 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we're sufficient. We need to get that, preachers. We need to get that. I get so tired up, I have to talk to my secretary. What? what you? We are helpers. What? One of, one of another. You're your brother's keeper. That's what Cain had problem with. <clears throat> Second Corinthians three, five. If we don't get beyond this fifth verse, it'll be enough for me tonight. Not that we're sufficient. You need to know you ain't bought nothing without Jesus. And you didn't drive in all that snow and have no accident without Jesus guiding that car. Amen. And helping other people to guide that car with your car. Amen. <clears throat> Not that we're sufficient of our... I need to get this to you in simplicity. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we're sufficient of ourselves. Now look at how he said it. To think anything as if it's our thought. But our sufficiency is God, the word of the living God, who also had made us able to minister the New Testament, and not according to the letter, but according to the Spirit, for the letter kill it. But the Spirit give it life. And we will pause right there. God be blessed in all of his people. Pastor Dr. James L. Wheeler here. Looking at sound system. Yeah, it's working good. We're teaching a subject. We're teaching a subject. Spiritual liberty. Which is called salvation. Free at last, free at last. What's the next statement? Thank God Almighty, I'm what? Free, free. Free at last means I'm walking without sin. <clears throat> when I teach you, I'm not teaching attorneys. 
I'm not giving you information to debate. I'm giving you information to eat. Amen. 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 Eat the information and your life will talk without your lip. Learn to love those that hate you. Now I'll tell you who hates you. Everybody that don't love God hate you. I don't care what their relationship is. If they don't love God, they hate you. They hate you for loving God. 